Here we are, worshiping once more as God's people. I ask, I pray that you will be in this new year persons who trust that God is guiding you. After all, that is the theme that I want to be about this day as we speak of God's grace and love. Let me offer this call to worship. Tough times come and they go. We just ask, oh God, that you would hear when we call in our times of distress. Lead us in your righteousness. There have been a lot on our plates lately, Lord. So our trust is that you have our best for your best in mind for us. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He is the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him, his name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord. Another prayer that we'll use on worship uh, on Sunday that I want you to participate in as you hear these words by YouTube. Gracious God, we come before you this day aware of our need for you. But you already know our needs, even before our asking. This assures us that you are guiding all things for all people, for your greater good. And in your loving care, you indeed are watching over us. With praise on our lips, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. These are challenging and different times. And so uh, the message is about persevering in difficult times. And maybe right now you're going through some difficult times, some challenges. Um, worried about our nation. Worried about the political matters that are before us. Worried about whether the uh, coronavirus will be sustained or contained by uh, the vaccinations and all of the efforts that are being taken place. We're in uncertain times, times of transition and change, so let us pray. Lord, may your ministering spirit be upon us, your people. For as we are virtually together through this YouTube video, Lord, we are, are virtually present with you in our lives. For we connect with you in this spiritual way. And because of that, our, our great trust is in you that you will guide us in your love and your presence. That you who have our future as certain will help us in, in our uncertainty to guide us through to that greater day when we will be able to look back and see how you were blessing us on our path through these difficult and, and challenging times. Now, Lord, hear our prayers as we offer them in silence, as we whisper them upon our lips. Oh Lord, you knew what we were requesting 
and you knew it as we whispered it on our lips. You wanted to hear. And so as we have lifted it up before, we pray that you will take control of that and you will foster that which is needing to be done in each of our lives. Oh, we pray for once more those in the medical profession, those who are serving in grocery stores, those who are making deliveries, those who are first responders and the police, the fire and all individuals. And we pray, Lord, that as you are the Prince of Peace, that you would cause that peace that passes all understanding within our hearts to be so fostered before others that our world becomes more peaceable. For this we ask and pray in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Another song. Going to try two today. I know that's, that's stretching it. Soon and very soon. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. And that's the king that we worship this day. Scripture. The Old Testament. The book of Psalms. Psalm 5, attributed to King David. It says, trust in God for deliverance from enemies. Ah, keeping within that theme of persevering in difficult times. Verse 1 and following. Give ear to my words, O Lord, and give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to pray to you, O Lord. In the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness, Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple and all of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. I turn to 2 Timothy. Used the, the third chapter of 2 Timothy last week in, a, in my message, but this, this message... Uh, comes to you uh, through the words of 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Paul encourages Timothy to be a good soldier for Christ. Hear those words from verses 1 through 10. You, then, my child, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me through many witnesses and trust to faithful people who will be able to teach others as well. Share in suffering like a good soldier of Christ, Jesus. No one serving in an army gets entangled in everyday affairs. A soldier's aim is to please the enlisting officer. And in the case of an athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work, who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, 
That is my gospel for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is God's word for you and for me. Thanks be to God. A brief prayer asking God's blessing upon this message. Lord, as we are people who are struggling in uncertain times, we need to find that path which will cause us to make it through. So Lord, bless, bless the words that I lift up. Bless my preparation. But bless our hearing of the word for all of us, Lord, need that word to come alive within our spirits to so inspire us in the days ahead. So I ask your blessing in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Persevering in difficult times. Mm. Perseverance is needed right now in this present time. And God offers hope. There, there is the challenge right now and that challenge that I put before you is to endure during these times of adversity. Oh, these challenging times in our culture, these challenging times in politics, these challenging times uh, as far as the health uh, of people. Uh, it, we're in the midst of, of a time when we need to persevere. Be faithful in this time of uncertainty. For these times are times that we need to in turn trust to God. For our greater goal will be if I, in the end, am a faithful witness that I would hope to be, that I need to endure and let God speak to my heart and mind. Faithful witness. I, I, I want to speak of some faithful witnesses before you right now. Uh, as I thought of some, and I prayed about them, and, I, well, I, I was thinking of Simone Biles, but, uh, well, while she's a, uh, an example of faith, I thought of these, and sorry that they're all males. Nelson Mandela. Oh, he's been dead a few years now. But he is a man who suffered for a cause. Do you know that he was jailed for 25 years? Five-year term at one point, in and out of jails, and then imprisoned for life, and almost was, was given death sentence while in that imprisonment. And finally released as they needed him to be a reconciling force through the ANC in South Africa. He became the one who reconciled the races. He and de Klerk were given the Nobel Peace Prize, and it was, I believe, in uh, two, 1993. 1994, he became president of South Africa. He went through difficult times and persevered. Glenn Beck. Yes, uh, as, as I'm, I'm in this life where I try to seek balance. I, what, I listen to NPR, I listen to WHP 580, and I want to be a balanced person who understands what's going on in our culture. But I heard this from Glenn Beck. He speaks about, freely about when he was a drunk. His life had hit bottom. By the time he was age 40, he was in despair and nearly took his own life, and he regrets the time that he wasted then, as he would say. But then points out, that as, he, as I quote from him, you can turn your life around. Things can change. 
Hang in there. Uh, and then he pointed out in most recent uh, um, time that I listened that the current division in America is not political. While we may perceive it to be that, there is a far deeper understanding that this, this division is spiritual. And then he recited these words. Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus' words from, from the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. And in that, he said that we need to be peacemakers. We need to be those in this time of great need, in this time of division, in the politics of, of the world. We need to be spiritually connected and be those who are peacemakers. And he says it starts with you and me, that, the, that we need to have this this understanding of being peacemakers because of our relationship with the living God. Then he closed out by quoting Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights advocate who, who uh, had become for, for Beck, one who is an inspiration. And he quoted, Beck did, I believe it's 10 or 12 rules for nonviolent protests as he encouraged those who worked with him to be demonstrators. He challenged them through these 10 rules to not fight back, to endure what was done to them, to stand firm, to pray for others. And all of those things that were rules by King, Beck was saying, we need to apply now in our lives that we might be, in our actions, a witness for Christ. He said, seek goodness, be kind, and do acts of kindness unto others. Another person that I, I prayed about and came to heart and mind was Stephen Curry. Yes, the, the NBA player, the guy who can sink a three-point shot with ease. Oh, what a great player. He, he uh, was MVP in 2015, for MVP for the NBA League. And in his acceptance speech, the focus became about his faith. And he witnessed to his love for the living God and that he, as a young person, came to salvation in Jesus Christ. And he's thankful for his mother, as he pointed, points out in, in this uh, in this presentation, that as he was in humble beginnings, his mother's faith and guided him through. And he continues to this day to be a, a positive witness for Jesus Christ, even putting a scripture text on a sneaker. More locally, and the last of those images that I want to lift up before you of those who were faithful witnesses it was a guy named Terry Brenneman. Oh, he died a, uh, quite a few years ago. He was a friend from the old neighborhood that I grew up in. And there are two things that I recall that were outstanding about his life walk. The first was that at the age of 13, when surgery, heart, open heart surgery was, well, it was just beginning, he was one who was a pioneer as, as a surgeon was willing to take him as a patient and operated on him out of, uh, out of uh, Philadelphia. The second thing that happened in his life that was outstanding was that as the holiday season was at hand, there was a party at his home and well, that morning, bottles were being thrown out of his house into the backyard, and folks were wondering what had happened. Here, he was throwing those bottles, now, not in celebration, but as an act of, of renewal. He had turned 180 degrees, came to salvation in Jesus Christ, and 
from that day forward witness to the living God and his faith in Jesus Christ before anyone who would hear it because given that heart surgery, he knew that his days would be shortened and he died in his 30s. He was a witness for Christ unto his death. Those are examples to us of humble beginnings, of perseverance in life's journey, and a positive witness as an example of God's love and grace. Now we turn to the scripture and we see that same perseverance that's going on in, in King David's life. It's called a royal song. And David calls God his king. And he speaks of this as a trust relationship with the living God. In the morning he rises to pray and he asks God for help, for guidance, for protection from his enemies, from those who would cause harm to him. And in the midst of adversity and difficulty, he trusts that God will be his shield of grace. David wants to be faithful to God and seeks God's unfailing love. He seeks the guidance in order to rise above the adversity and to see a greater future. For in the midst of all that struggle, he comes to discover that God will guide him through and he will persevere. In the New Testament lesson that, that was my selection for you, Paul sought to inquire of Timothy how to be an effective leader in the church to inspire those under his care to be excellent teachers and leaders in their own right as they were to be that community of faith at Ephesus that Timothy, the once timid believer, the protege of Paul, now was their pastor and leader. He wanted Timothy to be guided through, even in times of adversity of his, that he would keep close to the tradition and follow faithfully, keeping true to the word and that gospel truth that was the mantle of responsibility for Timothy to carry. You see, leaders do make a difference. As, and when they encounter hardship as a result, they will hit those speed bumps in life. They will be those under close scrutiny. But in those images of adversity, Paul then uses those illustrations. Did you hear them? There were three of them. Three images that he put forth. The image of a soldier under the command of the enlistment officer. Uh, he is trained. He is one who has learned the discipline of the rules of that commander who then follows through and faithfully lives out as a good soldier. And then he call Timothy a soldier of the Lord. Then, then there's this image of the athlete. Olympian athletes at that time would spend tw 10 months of their life training for the games so that they would be participants representing their city in the Olympic events 2,000 years ago. And they trained for that prize. Ah, as the soldier went through struggles, so too the athlete did. And the farmer, the, well, the farmer, that third image, lives through uncertain times. There might be a bad winter. There might be a drought. Uncertainty about whether that crop would come through. But the farmer would persevere and battle through even as the athlete would go to the finish line and the soldier would stand firm each would persevere to the end. Paul encourages Timothy to do likewise, to persevere and let the word prosper through what he does. Timothy was to be that faithful witness that Paul was encouraging him to do, that his mother, Timothy's mother, was an example of and an inspiration to him. And it caused me to recall my own mother, who was one who was an inspiration to me. Mom hung in there in tough times, when dad had lost a job, when, when, 
well, marital matters were not going well, and she always would say, make your bed, you lay in it. And it was that kind of stoicism that got her through adversity, and she persevered and was an example to me of the way to live my life. Who was your inspiration? Who helped you in times to persevere? Who was your example of how to live and battle through life storms for you? That person, no doubt, was unsure of the outcome, but trusted God. And you saw that in that other person. Now the challenge for us is to follow those examples and to live it out. The example of a parent, the example of a, of a mentor in our lives that keep us on the right path. In these difficult times, in these challenging days, to not, not be so succumbed to all that's around us, those distractions, but to battle through in this spiritual battle, to be those who are faithful to the word, living as God would have us to do, letting God guide us. That, that's what I want you to remember as I bring this message to a close. Just trust in the Lord, for God is faithful. And if we endure, there is that reward at the end, that reward for the faithful who will then discover the bounty of God's love and grace in our lives. God will guide you through, as God guided Paul through, as God guided David through, as God guided Timothy, as God guided me through, God guides us through. God, indeed, will get us through. Lord, in these days, oh, we can let ourselves, our defenses to, well, and, and just get discouraged and feel empty. But you want us to be able to battle through, to be those who discover the bounty of your grace and love that sustains us through all of this adversity and struggle to come to that time where you will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Inspire us to that end, each and every one of us. I ask in Jesus' name, amen.